everybody. Uh, so yes, I have introduced you all to Nana Pokia. So Nana Pokia, this is our Wose uh, family. Wose is our spiritual community here, and we're based in both Oakland and mm -hmm. in uh, uh, Sacramento, California. But we have people that are joining us here from really all over. So let's all uh, introduce ourselves and tell Nana our name and what uh, city and state you're from. Mana, uh, uh, Nana, I'm uh, Imhotep Al Kabalan. If I had an Akan name, it would be Kujo. And, Kujo, uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I would be, I would be, uh, so uh, I live in Sacramento, California, and originally from okay. Oakland, California. And he's okay. the minister, he is the minister of our congregation, is what he forgot to wow. say. Wow, wow, I'm privileged. <laughs> okay, um, I am Sister Ngina. Um, a longtime member of we'll say Oakland, of course, affiliated with SAC. Um, yeah. We're 40 years old in December, and I've been there for like 38 plus years. Whoa! <laughs> Good to know. He's from Oakland. Yeah. My name but is I didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear the name. Ngina. Ngina. Okay, Ngina. Okay. Yeah. Sister Ngina. Okay. And, yeah. Thank you. I, oh, thank you, Sorry. too. My name is Carol Afua Yates, and you know Afua, right? Yes, I, yeah, was, no. born, I was born on a Friday, and I'm a uh, woman. F yes, yes, F yes, F <laughs> <laughs> That was part of my experience, you know, with the Ghana Connections. You know, I traveled yeah. there a number of times, and it was really wow. wonderful each time. The hospitality yes. in Ghana is unmatchable anywhere. Yes, yes. It's really, really <laughs> lovely. And there's so yeah. many different groups there, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. first I went thinking Africa. Then I said, oh, I'm going to Ghana. And they said, what mm -hmm. part of Ghana? And who are you going to be? <laughs> I said, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't remember how many different ethnic groups. I don't like to say tribes. But I can't remember yeah. how many ethnic groups are in yeah. Ghana and how many different languages there are. Uh, yes, yes. So it's going to be we, good. We have that if we can yes. everyone just uh, we're <laughs> a little late so if everyone could just give her your name and where you live at so we can go ahead and get this good information i'm anxious to hear from nana okay i live in god and i live in um oakland oakland okay <laughs> my name is Debbie, and i live in sacramento sacramento okay i'm damani sakomo and i live in sacramento hey my name is damani Malik. My name is Malik, and I live in Rancho Cordova. Wow, Malik. My name is Terrence McKinney, and I am also in Sacramento, California. OK. My name is Celeste, and I live in South Bend, Indiana. OK, Ooh. South Indiana. Mm -hmm. Yes, wow. it's about 90 miles east of Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> Wow. My name is Kato Bazi, and I live in Oakland. Kato Bazi, okay. Yes. Yeah. Peace, Swahili. Swahili. Wow. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm so privileged. This 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 for Ghana is is morning, but it's evening over there. So mm -hmm. I'm privileged to to be with you this morning in Ghana, and probably evening over there. I'm, I'm so excited to, to be part of this today's meeting. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then I, I, I had Kujo. The Kujo? Kujo, Kujo. We, we, have, we have the Fanti. Fanti says Kujo. And Asanti says Kujo. Kujo. And then we have Efua. Efua too is a Fanti. And then Efia with A F I. A is, is a fear that is for the tree. So for me, I think Danisha wanted to know uh, the name, uh, the, the explanation to the name of Nana or the meaning of Nana. Uh, my name Nana Amma Pokia Athra. The Nana actually signifies an elderly person and is also a queen mother. When, when you are a queen or a kin, they call you Nana. And when you are being named after an elderly person, they call you Nana. And when you are an elderly person in Ghana, 
you're also called Nana. So the Nana comes in three in one. So for my Nana, uh, I was named after a queen mother. And at the same time, somebody who was also older at that time. So that is me. So I inherited it. It's, it's not me. I, I don't merit the Nana, but I inherited it. So that is my name, Nana. But Amma, Amma is a Saturday born. I was born on Saturday. That's why I'm called Amma. Then Pokia, the P-O-K-U-A-A. Pokia is, is a name that also means the mother of all. Mother of all. And of course, the Atta, uh, I got it from my husband. So that is not my name. <laughs> it, it is a Fanti. In Ghana, it's a Fanti name. Uh, so, but my na maiden name is Osei. My maiden name is Osei. It's O-S-E-I. That is also related to uh, like a father of a society. Mm -hmm. Right. So I guess everybody heard me. Yes. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, my network is not too good, so that's why I have to maybe ask. Yeah. So for uh, this this evening, we're looking at the language and culture of Ghana or the Ghanaians. Um, so I'll just take you through just three. I don't want to bore you so much, and we are taking it from just the basic way. Uh, we're looking at just three things, the language spoken in Ghana, and then we, we, we tell it through the government-sponsored ones because we cannot, I mean, list all of them, but the ones that are popular are the government-sponsored ones. Then finally, we look at the cultural components. That one, I will just list them because uh, if that one alone can take hours, so we just go through briefly. Uh, so we have the languages. I, I, I can say that it is really difficult to really talk about all the languages that we speak in Ghana. Mm. But those classifications are very, very difficult. A lot of writers have really penned down um, in a number of them. Uh, what as you see on the slide, we have Wadi. Wadi in 1971 mentioned that we have over 40 languages spoken in Ghana. And then Spencer also tell it to 30. So within the same era, there was that conflict and issued 40 and 30. Then we came to Grime. Grime also in 1984 also talked about the fact that it was so 60, had a number 60. Then uh, Bambusi also in the 1991 also talk, raised the number to 57. And then now the most current Boachi is also advocating for 100. And even there, he wasn't so specific. He said over 100. Uh -huh. So it's, it's like, we know very well that uh, classification of really language. I mean, people do a lot of research day in and day out and come out with different kinds of numbers. So at the stand now, Ghana, we have over 100 languages being spoke by the, the, the indigenous of Ghana, Ghana or Ghanaians in here. So that, that is basically that. So when, I just want to roll it down to the languages spoken in Ghana with regards to the government sponsored ones. Uh, you can see on the slide, I have about eight of them. The first of it all is Akan. Then we have the Gari. Then we have Dagbani. Then we have Dangbe. Then we have Farafra, then we have Ga, we have Gonja, and we have Kasim. Those are the government-sponsored languages in Ghana. So when you visit our schools within the regions, these are the languages that you will see. But it is spread across the nation from the southern to the north. Right. I guess I can just finish, then then we, we start with our questions. I hope that approach is right. Or do I have to interrupt and wait for questions as I present? You can go on and let's just uh, ask at the end. And if anyone has okay. a burning question, you know, we're an open group. So if someone has a burning question, you guys. Okay. Okay. So on the slide now, we see the first one, the Akan. The Akan 
languages alone, Lacan language alone, runs through these seven, se se seven, uh, I must say, groups, groups in Ghana that you can see. So within the Akan, we have six. We have the Achins, we have the Piapim, we have the Fanti, we have Kou, we have Enzema, and we have Asante. So all of this, all of these six, six, six languages, or I must say six ethnic groups form within that part, and they speak the Akan language. So the Akan language alone, we are having six here. And even with that, with this, or uh, with these six, we can still have a breakdown within that. Chimps, we have about two groups in there. If we are we also have about two groups, Fanti, Kweu, Enzima, we all have them. Enzima, you can have about two of them out there. So basically, though the language is seen as just one, there are, there are sub, sub, sub ones within out there. So the Akan society speak not only Chi, not only Asante, not only Achim, not only the Kuyapim, they all form within the Achim, Kuyapim, Fanti, Kwe, Inzima, and Asante. That, that is what we have for the Akans. Then we move on to Dagari. The Dagari is, is, is a language spoken in the Upper West region that is all part of the northern part of Ghana. Uh, they speak the Dagari, and as you can see on the on the screen, the, 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 that is a, a kind of dance that is very popular out there. Now, usually, these dances they do it during their transitional rites. It could be a naming ceremony. It could be be a, a festival. Most of the times, festival. I didn't bring some of their funeral dances because I just want to be brief. Maybe in the subsequent times when we have the chance, we can bring some of these things. But this is just an overview of what we have here. So we have Dangbe. Dangbe is also here. Dangbe is 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 a language spoken in Greater Accra. They they speak this kind of language. And then uh, what they are, is, is a kind of dance, they, they, they have the, the squatting dance, which is also very interesting, usually also performed during their, some of their transitional rites, but most especially the festivals, they do it at festivals. Then we have the Dagbani. For Dagbani, they are also in the northern region, and they speak this kind of language, Dagbani. So they are also seen as the Dagman people in the northern region. Then we have the Ewe. The Ewe, we say Ewe, but when you go to the indigenous, they don't pronounce it Ewe, they say Ewe, Ewe. And, 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 and if, if you don't have that confidence, you can't pronounce it <laughs> Ewe. So it's also spoken in the Volta region of Ghana. And this is how they also dress during this. This is a... Uh, they, they were conducting a puberty right. It's also part of the transitional rights. So, so they basically when it happens like that, they dress like this for, for that occasion. Then we, we have the Ga people. Ga is also spoken in greater Accra. Like the, uh, we have the, the Dangbe that we talk about and we have the Ga. So we have Ga Adangbe. So the Ga is there and the Adangbe is also there, all spoken in Accra, greater Accra region. So uh, this is a typical dance. They also perform during festivals. They are quick play festivals. Then we have the Gonjas. They are also from the North. So the, they speak this kind of Gonja and it's, it's a more recognized language out there when you go to their schools because it's a government sponsored language. Uh, they, they speak this kind of language out there, Gonja. Then we have the Kasim. The Kasim is also from the Upper East region. And, and also all part, all of them are at the northern part of Ghana, or northern region of Ghana. So this language is also spoken there, Kasim. Uh, then we move on to some of these, the cultural components that we have. You know, cultural components comprises of political, socioeconomic, religious, medical, and the belief. 
and then we have other industrialized ones that would come to more contemporary ones. Uh, but for our society, we really look at some of these things and in a traditional form. So politically, in Ghana, we, we have, we, we have the, 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 the kings, the traditional rulers, we have the king, the, the chief, we, we have the, the village heads, we, we have even within, within our markets, when you go to the market, we also have those who live there, they, they see them as the, the, the kings or the chiefs or the queen mothers of the market. So it's still it's all down from the up, meaning the king down to those in the various vocations. They also have their leaders that they also see as kings. So in, the, in our political system, it's not the, the, the general government political system, but the traditional system looks at, we see our king as a main ruler that runs through, even to our homes, they see the husbands as ruling in the house as a king. And then when we come to our social system, basically we look at um, our, our transitional rights, which comprises of our birth rights, uh, uh, our puberty rights, marriage rights, and then the finally our uh, death rights. So those social activities encompasses all. So when there is a marriage going on, it's, it's something good for the society. Everybody comes out to, to join in, in, in that joyous moment. And the same way when it's about death, it's the same thing we mourn. When we come, you come to the northern part, most especially the middle bed, let's say Asante, their funeral, they don't play with their funeral at all. <laughs> it's, it's all about, they really spend time on funerals from morning to evening, even prior day before that, they, they, they will have a wakeeping. And then the next day they run through the morning, the burial service, you have even the pre-burial and then the burial during the burial and then we have the post-burial for, for, for that. So it looks like more like for our traditional setting here, we draw so much on the social activities. So that there's a marriage right going on somewhere there. There, there. There's a funeral going on, there's a puberty. But for the puberty rights right now, it's really going down a bit. It's toning down because of the Western influence. So it's really toning down. But for the others, the birth rights, it's still there. When you go to the, the uh, greater Accra region, they see birth rights as very, very important. So even when the person doesn't have money, not a birth right. And in the same way, when it comes to the southern middle bed sector of Asante, for instance, the funeral, uh, it's, it's like, that, that is one part of it. They like it. So they don't play with funeral rights at all. If they don't have money, they will go and borrow money and, and come and have a funeral. So they, they do that a lot. So for our social activities, that is what holds the society. They, they really spend a lot of time on which of which people have really criticized it because they feel that it's a waste of time and all that. But then the society believes that that is what holds us. So because of that, and uh, they have not ahead to reducing some of these and even with COVID protocols and all that, people are still organizing funerals, naming ceremony, marriage rites and all that. Though they still observe the protocols, but you still see that they still do it in their numbers. And then the economic activities too. For there, we, 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 we do a lot of farming. There are a lot of things that we do with regards to weaving, uh, with regards to uh, native sandals making. But for the traditional setting, we have a lot, lots, lots of more of those, those vacations that they do. Uh, so with, with this, they, are, they also come with a lot of things like uh, how do I even put it? They, 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 they really uh, bring in or they, they, they support those activities with, with the music, the traditional music and dance. So when, when we go to a place where they are weaving or making a poetry, you see the people singing just to inspire them to work. So these are some of the activities that we do out here. Uh, people love it and they believe that do singing, dancing, and then moving around so happily and all that really help them to get the energy to work. So our economic system is also backed with all other performing arts as well 
so it's, it's a typical thing with the, the traditional people of Ghana, where when you go up north, we, we have people with the sirigu, we have people when the weave baskets, we go, it's very exciting moments. You see them singing and some of them we even dance to entertain them while they are still working. And, and when you ask them, within their waste of time, they know that is what keeps them, I mean, working and gives them the energy to work. And then religiously, for the religious aspect, I mean, for our religion, uh, it's, it's really got a Western influence. So the traditional way of worship that they used to have uh, that doesn't seem to be uh, there for now. It's, it's, there's been a whole lot of adulteration. So it's like the, the, the traditional one has, is really weighing off, but then the Western one is what we see. But then we still have people who are into the African traditional religion, and they, they also do all the activities that they used to do uh, at some time past. Then we come to our medical system. For our medical system to... Uh, it's also still there, though there's also an influence of Western medi medical system, but then they also still practice this of which they, they have. When you come to Ashanti region, for instance, they, they, have, they, they have what you call the, the traditional priest, and they are the ones who, who seek to the welfare of the people with regards to medicine when somebody falls sick and all that, they go there just, just to, to, to seek the face of the gods and for them to provide medicine for them to heal. Mostly they use, I mean, uh, the leaves most of the times to heal the people. So those ones do, but those ones do, they also use a lot of performing arts. When you go there, they, 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 they are dramatic rise there just to incite the belief of the people. Uh, they, they do a lot of dances out there at the shrines. They, they also do a lot of, uh, they, they pour a, a lot of libation or they make libation to be precise. Uh, so, so these are the things that really goes on when it comes to our cultural system. And the belief of the people is what winds it. They believe that if they don't have that, that instant belief in them, there's no way they can perform all these activities. So political, social, economic, religious, and medical, uh, I mean, form, how do I even put it? The, the belief form the basis or the foundation for all the other cultural components that I just mentioned, being it political, social, economic, religious, and medical system. So these are a couple of references uh, with regards to. So thank you very much. I, I, did, I just wanted to give you just a, a little list of it. And maybe subsequent times when time comes, we can do more of that. So thank you very much for your thank attention. You. Thank you. I noticed uh, <clears throat> you did mention um, music as a separate category. Are we to assume that music emanates from all these various categories that you listed that made up the, the culture? Uh, there's so much music that comes out of Africa. That's why I I asked that yes. question, how does music uh, fit into it? Come again, please. I didn't get the latter yeah. part. <laughs> yes, I was curious that you didn't mm -hmm. mention music mm -hmm. as a separate mm -hmm. category under your cultural component. You did okay. mention that so, so much of these various uh, subsets of the culture, yes. there is music involved. But yes. I, I was wondering about music as a standalone component oh, okay. itself. Yes, 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 yes. So music is actually not standing alone as a component, but then because it, it helps the component to, to really do the activities in there. So when you go to the political system, there is music all around. Every activity that goes on within the political systems are there. Because when, when, when a king is even walking, there are times there are music and, and there the are drums as well that uh, tells him how to walk. Most of the time, if you are, you, you are not part of the people, you wouldn't even understand. It's just to direct his path. At times, they will be singing to tell him, look down, look down so that you don't stumble. And it's all out of music. 
they do all that all through the every activity within the cultural components but then we don't see it as one part of the cultural component because it's formed part of each one of them so uh, I, we feel like maybe it cannot stand on its own but it is imbibed in each one of them i see thank you yeah thank you dear. I have a question. Um, yes, please. Um, thank you again for coming. Really do appreciate it. Uh, for the miracle um, and the belief, he said a lot of the people um, go to to the um, not the Western doctors, but I forgot what you could call them. The the, the, the healers. I'm just going to say the healers. I forgot what to call them. But you said they go to to seek the face of the gods. The Explain gods, yes. Okay. Some more. Uh, they go to see the face of the gods. Okay. What yeah. happens is that they, they, because they have the belief in the gods, they, they believe that the gods know everything. Okay. They see the gods as the conduit between, between them and, 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 and the, the, the supreme being. Okay. So then the, the gods are like the mouthpiece of the supreme being. So they, they go there to seek the faith. They go there to seek the faith, not, not to seek the faith of God through the gods. That is what they believe. It's not like they are going to seek, maybe, maybe, maybe the, the, I didn't choose the words right. They, they go there to seek the faith of God through the gods. So they see the gods as a lesser spirit, but God is a supreme. So they go there to, to uh, ask of how they should be healed or the process, how they, they, I mean, the process that they need to go through to be healed. So they go there and through that, they, 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 the priest there who is believed to be the mouthpiece of the gods or the main supreme God is sought for. And then the, whatever that they wish for is also given to them so that they can go through the healing process. Okay. No, you, you use the right words. I appreciate that. That's that I want okay. to make sure. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank okay. you too. Thank you. Can I, can I ask a question about uh, medical? Um, yes, please. Yes, please. I know a number of years ago, one of the big things in Ghana was the uh, degrees that they had for traditional and herbal medicine. Yes. And so you could graduate from the university and be hired yes. any place in the world and they would respect yes. what you've yes. been taught in Ghana for herbs. Can you say a yes. little bit about that? Does it still exist? That people also go to school to study medicine, uh, traditional medicine? Yes. Is that? And yes, for medicine? here. Yes, we, we do it here. Even in my university here, we do herbal medicine. People go, but then there's there's this difference between the traditional one, I mean, and and the the ones that we are studying at the university. They draw so much on the herbs, the herbs that they, they use. Though the, the the traditional one, they also use the herbs. But then there is a spiritual attachment. They believe so that mm. for 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 they they get directions from from the the supreme being or okay, through the gods. So yes, it's spiritually inclined and they don't heal just the disease. They also heal the people psychologically. So, so they do, they feel they do two things all together. And yes, it's more therapeutic than the, 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 the convention one or the, the Western one, let me be used for lack of better words, the ones that we learn at the university. So, so that is the basic thing that the, that's the, the, the thin line between the two. Though they all use herbs, but they, 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 this one, the traditional one believes that they, 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 have, they have the therapeutic aspect also attached to it. So for here in Ghana, we still do it. Herbal medicine is something that students are really enrolling now and then just to be herbal doctors. Yeah. Please have I answered you. I have, a, I have a question. Um, uh, Midasi Anana, thank you again for for oh, the presentation. Um, thank you. So uh, can you explain uh, the concept of Nyame? Nyame? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. The concept of Nyame, Nyame is the supreme God. 
Yami is the supreme God that everyone sees, the main God that we Christians believe that he is. He is the supreme God, the omnipotent God. That is the Nyame. That is how Ghanaians, and for that matter, the Akans who say Nyame, they believe that he is the supreme God. But they have a Nyame, and Nyame is a lesser God. They, they are the ones that uh, they, 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 they communicate to. They serve as a conduit between the people and the God. So God is the supreme umbrella. When you are taken from the top, God is the, the, the biggest of all. Then we narrow down to the spirit. And for Asantis, they believe even the ancestors are above the spirits. So the ancestors come before the spirits. So then, so, and for somebody to be an ancestor, it is believed that the person really, uh, I mean, lived well. And he, he, he lived a life that was actually above reproach before that person was seen as, as an ancestor. So, but for the other, other, other regions and I mean, other ethnic groups that we have, some of them believe that after the Nyame, the, the main supreme God, it is the, 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 the spirits that comes before the ancestors. But we believe so much that the ancestors comes before that. So the Nyame is the supreme God. I don't know if I've answered you, Rev. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Madani. you too. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. So um, historically, now we had a wonderful historical tribute uh, by mm -hmm. uh, Darnisha, and she talked mm -hmm. about um, she talked about Ya Santiwa. Uh, yeah, Santiwa. Would you like yeah. to? Because I know that she is like, you know, very paramount in um, in Ghana. Asante. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. he's very so, paramount. Yeah. But he, he's Asante. There, there was one other one in there. Uh, I've forgotten her name. She's also in Ghana. She's well, she was also a very prominent lady. Yeah, in the ass. But for history has really toned down on her. I I I, for, I don't really know why. But yeah, Santua was a great warrior. I'm sure Danisha told you. Yes. Was, was a great warrior. Those times women were not going for war. The women were staying at home for their husbands and their children. The, their youth to go for war. But then when they captured the king, Prempe, the first, Yasantua was like, how? The men were, I mean, they really was cold. Let me use that word for lack of appropriate word. They, they, they were down and that they couldn't go for to, to chase them for their king. They took the golden school, the, the golden stool that they believed to house the soul of the Asantis. They took it away together with the king. And so when Yasandua was there, and said, oh, he was a queen mother of one of uh, our, our suburbs in, in, in Kumasi. He called uh, Ejoso, Ejoso, they call it Ejoso. And then he re she realized that if, if nobody stands up, uh, there's no way they'll bring their king back. So he went and he called the men, men, where are you sleeping? Please get up and let's go. And then he led that war. They were not successful though. She, also, she was also captured. But then through it all, she made history because for a woman at that time to get up to lead the men for war was something that was, uh, I mean, so surprising. So then it, it made history in Ghana and for that matter, Asante history. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, could you also address uh, Osage for Kwame Nkrumah? Oh, for Osage for Kwame Nkrumah, for we all know that he held the fort to independence. Uh, he was also a great man in history, and uh, we, we, we saw that he did so much for Ghana, and then even up to now, people still believe that if he was still alive, a lot of things would have changed because he had a vision of uniting the whole Africa. And um, I mean, he, he wanted to unite us so that we can do things in common. And even for Ghana, the initial stage, he wanted to have a unitary, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, the federal state kind of uh, at that time where the people really fought against and then it had to be unitary. Uh, so for, for Kwame Nkrumah, he did much in, with regards to development in Ghana, infrastructure and all the, our schools. He did a lot for us 
for our schools. Even right now, there are still schools, the buildings that he built for those schools, they are still there, of which nothing has been done to it. And you look at it and it's like, ah, if this great man had been on for quite a long time, a lot of things would have changed. So for me, Kwame Nkrumah was a great man, is a great president as well. And we all believe so. That is how I come right now. Most of the things that we do, we keep mentioning his name. We, we, we have to make sure that we revisit his history because he did a lot for Ghana. There was Thank someone you. that had their hand raised and um, I, I saw it. So if, if the person who had their hand raised, if they could ask their question. Can I, just, can I just insert something real quick? What was the meaning of Kwame Nkrumah's name? Kwame Nkrumah. Uh, Kwame was is a Saturday born like myself. Okay. But but the, for the Nkrumah people, because he he's, he really came from Izima area, so people are saying that it, it was his name. The, there was a corruption of the name because Nkrumah in Ashanti means the ninth born. The ninth born. Mm -hmm. But going through history, it wasn't the knife born. So they, they believe that there was a twist to the name, though he was like that. Maybe he inherited the name from a different region or what. But for nine, his name is Kwame Nkuma. So Kwame is a Saturday born, and then Nkuma is the knife born, the knife born of parents. So knife born. We have Bedu. Bedu is the tenth born. So he came right before the tenth born. So he's a ninth born. Yes. Thank you. Um, Nana, Thank can you. you talk? A, I'm sorry, Mama Gina, did you have, you had your hand up. Do you have a question? No. Okay. Nana, could you talk a little bit about the Volta uh, region? I know when I was there, people told me that in the Volta, people still believe in magic up there and that there are ceremonies where like they make it rain on a certain day every year. <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> for these things, uh, uh, most of the time it's it's people do say, but I haven't witnessed it before. People say that they they use a lot of juju and all that, so it's like they they really fear 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 them. They use a lot of magic, you know. But in fact, it's not it's not Volta region. The northern part also have they have this kind of thing, and even with the southern part, Ashanti region here. When there are time when, when the, the, the king is having a festival, at that time of the festival, he invites all the local priests to come. And when they come, they do a lot of, I mean, uh, I mean wonderful things that when you are present, it will marvel you. Some swallowing fire, some, some uh, <laughs> swallowing pythons, some, it's, most of the times it's, 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 it's really marvelous. For Volta region, I haven't got that experience before, but that of the North and Ashanti, I have witnessed that before. But the, the people say it's true. And they, I mean, they, they, they really attest to it. And then we have, I mean, some, some write-ups on that. People have published in journal articles uh, with, with, with those assertions, but, but I, um, I haven't been able to witness some, some, some of them. But then once it is written, there, there could be an idea of truth about it, right? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I have one more question and then I have to leave. And I want to say thank you, Dr. Nana, for coming. I really do appreciate it. Thank uh, you. One more question from me. You're welcome. Uh, you said um, about the burials, um, <laughs> that the French people said that it was a waste of time. Do mm -hmm. you feel that, I want to know why, and do you feel that it's racist? Do I feel that it's racist? Did yeah, do you feel... When, is that French? <laughs> yeah, I, I really, really, really don't think so. For that okay. one, I, I, I don't think so. But what, what I believe is that, because right now, we mean, the, a lot of things are changing. Hmm. I look at what is happening now. Now COVID has been, I mean, changed a lot of things for us. Okay. Now those those of us in the university were teaching face to face. We all have to move to online. Things have right. changed. The way we use our time has changed. So then people think that once we are advancing and it's like we are still going back. They, they are not saying we should stop the funeral, 
But then looking at using two days, and two days won't go anywhere. There will only be any economic activity. There, will be, there won't be any family activity. There won't be any work. You have to be there for two conservative days for that. And people are advocating that maybe they can reduce that. If, if it's, 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 it's the pre-burial, they can maybe take the pre-burial off. They can do it the same day, do the pre-burial the same day, then the barrier, and then maybe the post-burial rise all within one day. But then it starts from Friday, then Saturday will be the main funeral, then Sunday will be the second certain for the funeral, and then Monday will be the account rendering. So four solid days are gone because of that. So, so, so that's how people, I mean, started talking about it. But I, I don't think those foreigners who probably think, might have think that, or thought that it, it's, 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 it's something, to, it had something to do with, with racism or something. But I think okay. uh, maybe they, they were just being objective, yes. Okay. Because thank you. I'm originally from, you walk, thank you. I'm, I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm what? born and raised. Wow. We have something called a, yeah, we have something called yeah. a second line up uh -huh. there for you know for the ones who have passed over into the ancestral realm, uh -huh. uh, and we also you know carry on the day before, the day of, mm -hmm. and the day after. You know, uh, yes, so yes, it's similar to you know uh, so, what the Indians do. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure because when you said the French uh, said it was a waste of time, you kind of yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you again. I got to thank go. That's too. my time. Thank All you guys right. again. Thank okay. you. Thank you once again. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Okay, Charles. Good seeing you, brother. Oh, um, Anybody else has any other questions? I have one more, but I don't want to hog none. <laughs> I have a question. If no one else has had a chance to speak, but I have a, I have a, uh, a question. Okay. Uh, yes, I was curious as to. Um, any feedback, any observation, commentary you may have around the uh, the policy that uh, uh, that that Ghana had institute around the the issue of the year of return, and I was curious as to any observations, any um, thoughts or commentary you may have uh, on that. A, a commentary on the year of return. I think they, I, I missed the earlier part. My, my, my power, I mean, the network is fluctuating over here. Oh, I see. Yeah, my question was, um, um, what are your thoughts? How have things, um, how have things gone? Uh, what are your thoughts uh, on, the, um, on the year of return? Mm. Oh, my thoughts on the year of return, yeah. Uh, generally, I'll say that it, it was a good idea because it, it was like, I mean, uh, it was a time for us to meet the uh, tithes because there are some of us who left the shores of Ghana so many years ago, and now they are nowhere to be found though, but they are, they, 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 they are I mean, ancestors have worked all the way through and they are still there. So if the chance has come for them to come and then see or see their roots, or come to meet their ties over here, I felt like it was a very good opportunity. And for me, I really love the whole idea because maybe my background as to uh, uh, having a background in culture and then I, I have that belief. So the whole idea was a very good idea of which it, it was it's something that we really have to continue to do so that we can see more of you here. That's how Reverend got the name Kojo. And then we have a Fua too there. So some of these things will help us to know our roots. So we won't forget about the, the most certain is that those of us here are just taking things for granted because we we have the, the story is here with us. But I mean people don't show interest in but if if our own people out there will come and learn and go and sell it out there. I think it's, it's the best thing too. So we are one family and then I feel like it, it was a good thing. I, I just have to say that it was a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a question and uh, but forgive me if this sounds, might sound insulting be, because oh. that, 
That is not no. In, no, in academia, there's nothing like that. Oh, all right, all right, cool. <laughs> Yes. Well, so, you know, Ghana is probably the most pan-Africanist country yes. on the yes. continent of Africa. Kwame Nkrumah, uh, yes, Malcolm Nkrumah. came there, Du Bois, yes. all of them. Du Bois, yes. So, um, why is, is in, in such a place as Ghana, so much rich culture, so much pan-Africanism, do the judges still wear the British wigs in there. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> hmm. That that is it. Oh, that is that is one thing that we we keep saying, because right. it, it's about time that we 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 have to show the world what we have. Yeah. So why are we still? And I think I, I wouldn't blame so much on, but maybe because of the the I mean because of the that colonial rule, you know, the, the colonization, because yeah. that might have influenced that a lot. So maybe going back has become difficult and it has become part of us now. So it, I'm sure it's quite difficult for the people to, but I, I don't see it. We can still change it. Because I remember uh, one of the president who was there in 2000 to 2008, President Kufo, he said that every Friday we should try and wear something African. And it will marvel you to know that. Right now, it become a trend. And every Friday, somebody wants to put on something African, whether if it's a woman, a slate or kaba, or a top made with African fabric, with having beads all around, and they're going to work with it. And it has become something that is well accepted. So, so I mean, it's true. We, we can, I mean, revisit. Let's change. But they, all, they will also just come out and say that. Uh, the, the law court is not for us. We learned it from them. So then we have to do what came with it. I mean, people will definitely have any justification for everything. But I believe that we, it's not too late. We can still revisit, this, I mean, our past with, with the, our way of dressing, our way of life and eat, eating. I, I, I didn't want to talk about the various food that we eat in other, but I just wanted it to be short. So I just pick all of those things out. I think I think it's, it's it's a very good thing to do, Rev. Thank you. Well, yes, and uh, well, just one more. Uh, so, I mean, you have like batakaris and you have fugu. Ooh. Yes. And yes. Uh, you know, such beautiful fabric and um, yeah. You know, so I'm trying to buy up as many as I can here, okay. and I've never even been to Ghana, and uh, yeah. I, I would just think. You know, mm -hmm. but that would be something that would just be a standard there. Uh, but I'm yeah. glad you're revealing what what is going on uh, there. Yeah. Uh, you know, somebody asked you about uh, the Kwame Nkrumah's name. Can you just say what Osajifo means? Osajifo, it, it's 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 a, a, a title, an appellation that we give to uh, somebody who is like a warrior, a, a warrior. Osa is is Osa. What Osa, Osa is a war. Let me put it that way. Osa is war. The Osa. So he took the people out of war. So Osa Ajifu. Ah. Uh, Osa is a war. And Jifu, Jifu is a redeemer kind of, a redeemer. So Osa and Jifu. So Osa is, is, is a war and Jifu is a redeemer. So it's like redeeming the people from the war. So like and a savior, so like a savior. savior. Yes, huh? that is the most appropriate word. Uh, all right. Savior, 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 because he saved Ghana from the British rule. Mm. So that is why he's Osage for. Ah. Okay. My yes. question is about the puberty and the puberty rights and kind of how mm. that affect on marriage. You mentioned that one of the one of the traditions, the rights that is declining, mm -hmm. the only one mm -hmm. that's declining is the puberty, right? Yes. That yes. I think. Uh, does that have effect on marriage? I mean, you would think people are there that people go through rights and those rights kind of prepare you for marriage. Mm -hmm. Marriage seems yeah. to be very serious when I was there. People still seem to take marriage real seriously. So I just, yes, yeah. you know, how does that puberty, a lack of puberty rights affect the marriage? And then talk about the marriages and how people do the two ceremonies, mm -hmm. the traditional and the Western. The Western, yeah. For, for, for the puberty, I think the main cause had to do with the way we do it. 
Because those times, the, the women have to go out naked, they dress them and bring them to the society and everybody sees them and all that. And through that, after that puberty, but it's not only, they, they, they take them through a lot of nurturing. I mean, with regard to how to cook, how to take care of your husband in the home, how to take care of your children in the home. So there are lessons that are being learned throughout that period of puberty, the, the right sessions. So, so then the, the, the part of it that was not so much like what had to do with the, with the dressing, the bathing of, of them at the riverside and, and all sailed through for uh, places like uh, Eastern region, there's a place called that you have depot rights. That right is still there. They still do it. No matter how educated you are, you have to take your child to, to that place for, for, to go through that ritual. And that is what they've been doing. But some people are still have been running away from it because they don't want to do. And one major reason is also Christianity. Right now, because when Christianity came, we are also taking up that mantle. So when people are coming to marry, they go through counseling at the churches. So now the things that they have to go through the traditional way, they are doing it at the churches. So that right, I mean, that, that responsibility that was on the queen mothers during those times has now been transferred into the church. So right now is the church that is doing this. And uh, explaining the, the other section in regards to the, uh, they having the traditional wedding, I mean the traditional marriage and the, what do you call the white wedding? Is it the second one? Mm -hmm. Danisa? But, but they're able to actually, the, the community considers them married after the community one, right? And then is the, the white one is more like a show, right? Yes, more like, more like. Because, because for, even when you go to the church, if you don't do the traditional one, the church will not accept it. Uh -huh. So that one is, but, I mean, before, that was the only thing that they do. The traditional one, there wasn't any church one or the white wedding, what they call. They do this one. And, but this, the church wedding came in because they feel like it's also another family that we belong to. So let's go there and bless it so that the family there too will see that we've also got married. And now it has been blown up. It become like a show kind of where so people don't have money yet they have to do it. And that has been the norm. But the traditional was was us all. The traditional one was what we used to do before. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got a question. Um, um do y'all in school do y'all study much about Dr. Walter Rodney? Mm -hmm. Dr. Walter Rodney wrote the book. Um, uh, Europe underdeveloped Africa. Mm -hmm. Underdeveloped is, is, Africa. How uh, Europe mm -hmm. underdeveloped Africa is is he spoken of much in Ghana? Is he uh, spoken of? Mm -hmm. much? Oh, okay. Yeah, I found that the uh, the the textbooks and the things that I saw in Ghana, like their their textbooks, uh, they had. I think two pages. I talked to when I talked with high school kids. It was like two pages on slavery. They had the triangle slave trade picture, and they're not doing a lot of. There's a. I found that there. I, I thought that when I after spending time there, there's a huge market there for the type of tradition, the learning that we provided at Ilayama Day. They they're not getting that in on the continent. Okay. I have a question too. Uh, a couple of years ago, I think Ghana um, and a number of other African countries with the United Nations came up with a resolution that people of African ancestry could come back to Africa up until the year 2024. Is there some kind of uh, uh, government program or project that incorporates that? Well, she didn't hear me. Maybe she's having a connection. Maybe she's having a connection problem. But when I was there, that was one of the things that I really spent a 
I tried to spend a good amount of time checking into because I was told that you could, especially during the year of return, a lot of people said that there was an offer of uh, citizenship or dual citizenship. Um, mm -hmm. So I talked to quite a few people. What I did not do was go and knock at the door of that office that I should have went to. But I talked with a lot of kind of political types and, you know, kind of officials. And it was very, I mean, you guys know Brother Kwame, right? He's a pretty resourceful brother. Right? Kwame has not figured that part out yet. So it's, it's a little elusive when you're there on the ground. I found. I mean, I was only there for 30 days, but I found that it was a, it was pretty elusive. Well, there are a number of uh, people from the diaspora and uh, the United States that have already relocated and settled into Ghana. And they have like a, a an association there, don't they? Yeah, Kwame is the secretary of that association. He's very, very closely associated, but he doesn't have citizenship. He works very closely with that association. They all meet at uh, One Africa uh, out at uh, near El Nina. There's a big group of folks. Right. Okay. I have so a friend that visited Ghana in December of last year, and he currently holds dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. and, um, the year of return, they're calling this year the year of return and beyond. And my understanding is they're still offering that to us. Can you ask your friend to forward the Yeah, process? I will do that. I'll do that. Yeah, I would love to have that and share it. And did he do that during the year of return? He did it during 2019? Yes. Well, he was there in December of 2019 and he applied. Okay. So, um, yeah, he got to the spot. You got the you got the hot information. Uh, yeah. So we were planning to go December of this year. Um, the airport is now open, but I, I don't. I still don't feel comfortable traveling. But that was our plan to go December of this year. The tickets are a thousand dollars round trip too. <laughs> it sounds like somebody's getting ready. Well, you know, I had a trip planned. You know, I had a trip plan for December as well and I haven't quite completely given up on it I don't know I'm, I'm nervous about you know I don't want to be foolish and you know do anything do anything foolish and impulsive but like the rest of America I'm a little stir crazy I think I need to leave this place for a while <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I, I'm thinking that probably we can continue talking a little and wrap up. I'm thinking that probably Nana may have had, maybe having a connection problem. Are you, can you hear us, uh, Nana Pokia? She's probably trying to connect. I see she, it hasn't dropped, but. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I thought it was a good uh, presentation, good initial uh, presentation, <laughs> looking forward to uh, uh, getting further. Uh, obviously, she's very knowledgeable and, you know, her, her slides were brief, but uh, her, her explanation was, was excellent. And um, um, I, I, I'm, I'm just looking forward to working with her uh, 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 some more. Um, I know next week we have uh, Sister Celeste and she's going to be talking about basics for financial literacy. So Celeste, are you still on? Uh, would you like to give us a little... Uh, you know, a preview of just a few uh, words about what you're speaking about next week? Well, um, yes, and ask you to some degree what you want. Um, Sister Afua had asked about uh, opening up bank accounts elsewhere. So I did look to see what was required to open a bank account in Ghana uh, and in the Cayman Islands. Um, looking at um, the banks that, and credit unions, well, the banks that are black owned and the credit unions that are uh, controlled or have boards that are majority black. Um, and that's interesting. There's some differences of opinion, or I guess how they're counting that. So, um, Danisha, you had said you only saw the one bank, um, one United, I think it was. Uh, well, and one, 
it's a it's the bank that's it's the largest black bank and it's owned by one man um, rather than a group. Uh, so I found that to be interesting, but the banks that we've had through the years, but mainly to get to the basics of how we operate daily with our finances, um, using the accounts that are available and what our credit reports mean and how to go about doing that in a way that helps us work through the existing system mm -hmm. of banks and credit unions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So are you going to tell us how to start a credit union? That would be the next one. Okay. All so right. I will look into that if that's something we're interested in. Okay. Well, you know, in information is good. Um, I really like credit unions myself. And uh, we, we're actually members of the Sacramento Credit Union. And I just find that, uh, you know, for getting loans and different things, the credit union actually works with you. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's closer. It's a, it's kind of a closer knit community rather than, you know, like a big bank, like, um, B of A, Wells Fargo, et cetera. It is most, um, credit unions or many credit unions were started from a particular group or employer. So they had a common bond. So that's changed a little bit uh, through the years and it's gotten bigger, but they're predominantly community based in their mission and in their funding of what they do, their operations and their investment is within the community. And the owners are the members. Yes, yes. Trying to reconnect to her audio. Does she, it, I, I saw that in the chat, so did she, um, is, is she back her, with us? Her audio is moving uh, uh -huh. here, so I think she's trying to come back and, and possibly say goodbye. If okay. not, we'll, we'll thank All her right. uh, anyhow. And uh, just, just by a show of hands, one of the things that we are looking to do is next month to try out doing some Saturday sessions. They'll be in the morning. I don't know if you guys realize, but it's uh, after midnight. It's 1 o'clock. It's 1.30 in the morning in Ghana. Um, so Nana is going to Get, get some sleep in just a second because she's got a full day and a few hours to, to get started. So the Saturdays are going to be in the morning. Uh, we, I think we said 10 in the morning so that it's at a reasonable uh, time for her. So just by a show of hands, how many of you might be interested in doing that on a Saturday morning? Okay. All right. That's, that's enough to justify uh, her getting on up. <laughs> <laughs> and I see her beautiful face is uh, in the screen again now. Uh, oh. Well, why don't you have her unshare her screen and then we can kind of wrap up. Okay. We got about five minutes left. There you go. All right. Yes. Oh, uh, Nana, are you, are you back? Yeah, I don't know. I can hear you now. Yeah, we can hear you too. So let me ask oh, okay. you So, just one more thing. Uh, okay. you know, we're, all, we're all stunned by the uh, passing of uh, Chadwick Boseman, who played the Black Panther. Can you just mm -hmm. say how that movie was received in Ghana? Wow, <laughs> it, it was well received. It was well received in Ghana. In my home, for instance, my children, all of them, they knew him. I actually didn't know him because I'm, I'm not, I mean, the, 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 the watching type. I don't really watch so much of video. If you see me working, it's actually going to be like, maybe some academic videos and we don't really get the time to really entertain our eyes, <laughs> but then the children do. They really, they really like it. It was well received. They really talked about it on our, I mean, TV stations, they, 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 they all shared the, 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 the sorrow. And then the, the fact it was, it was really well received. The movie was well received and people really know him very well. And but I, I also heard that the uh, Ghanaian uh, Tourism Authority sued uh, the film company for the use of the kente cloth or to ask them to, to, you know, to credit them for the use of the kente cloth. Do you know any of it, about that? For, for that one, I haven't, I haven't heard so much on that. But I know that they have really, really, really talked about it. They have talked about it all throughout. And, but I didn't know that I also knew. There was well, one time I even came home and they were watching 
that movie, but but I, I, I didn't know. It was later that they showed me it was this gentleman that uh, died not long ago. And so, yeah. So, so for Reverend, it was well received here. Yes. It was well received. And the yes. people are in, in the morning mood. They are all morning too. Yeah. They are on such a life. Um, I mean, as we close, we got about two minutes. Uh, we didn't mention, uh, well, you touched on it just briefly. Uh, okay. COVID, how is uh, that pandemic uh, affecting uh, Ghana specifically? Uh, are there high rates or is it, is it being maintained? Uh, what, is, what is the uh, feeling there? Yes, right now it's, it's, it's really not so much. It's not, I mean, the numbers are really increasing, right? And we have about 30,000 uh, cases, but for death we have, there's about 250. 250, but they, those were the people who have some underlying conditions. They, they had some conditions that, so I'm, I'm sure that might have caused that. But most of the people who get it recover. They uh -huh. recover a lot. And right now, people have moved out doing a lot of things. And right now, some even don't wear masks when they are going out. Even when you tell them, so this COVID should go away and let's be free. Uh, so for Ghana, we, we are grateful to God because, you know, we, we are still developing and then we are not so much privileged with other health facilities and all that. So I'm sure God knew that because if it really hit us hard, I don't know what would have happened because even, even when, when a, a woman is going for labor, you see them lying on the floor at times with the remote areas. It's only the, 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 the what do you call it, the urban centers that we get the opportunity to have luxurious way of life in a way, but the remote areas, they might have suffered. So I'm sure that is how come that God has been very faithful to us and we have experienced very low death here. Well, uh, Mudasi again, Yeda Yamiasi for your being able to come all the way from Ghana to us here in California and uh, in the United States, I want to thank uh, Mama Darnisha for wonderful uh, 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 organization to getting you uh, to, to come and present to us. And we look forward to uh, learning some tree and, uh, yes. <laughs> you know, from an authentic tree speaker. And yes. uh, uh, God bless you and, um, and, and, and your works at the University yes. of, of Nkrumah.